So to convert between degrees and radians, we are going to multiply by the pi radians over 180 ratio. Okay, the fraction pi radians divided by 180. So if we're working with converting 280 degrees to radians or 422 radians, they want us to not use a calculator. We can use it to check our work, but we want to be able to do it without a calculator because there will be a portion of your, of your test that's calculator free that you should be able to do everything without it and then a portion that you will need the calculator for. Okay, so if we're converting 420 degrees to radians, we write our 420, and we just have to remember that we're trying to get rid of degrees, so we want to put our degrees in the bottom. So what's our conversion factor between radians and degrees? Pi over 180. There's pi radians and 180 degrees. Or if you want to not use the simplified form, you can say it's 2 pi radians in 360 degrees. Okay, this is a much more simplified form. So now we can cancel our degrees, and 420 divided by 180, well, there's a 10 in each one or 100 in each one, so we can simplify that way. And then what do they both have in common? 6. So 42 divided by 6 is, and 18 divided by 6 is, so we have 7 pi over 3. And we leave it like that. It's okay that it's a mixed number, that we or improper fraction. We don't want a mixed number from it. Okay, make sense? 280 is the same way. 280 degrees, we're multiplying by pi over 180 to make the degrees cancel. And 28 and 18 were reduced to what? What do they have in common? 2. So 28 divided by 2 and 18 divided by 2, and you're done. Okay? Now, I have recommended that graphing calculator to you all, and so I want you to be able to use it. So let's find the graphing calculator here. Okay. So to check your work, okay, if you are checking your, your work while well, you're doing your homework and so forth, if we wanted to take that 420, right, and divide it by 180, we don't want to multiply the pi in. Just leave it in terms of pi. But when we take 420 and we divide that by 180, it will give us a decimal, 2.3 repeating. Okay? Our graphing calculators don't have that lovely ABC button, that fraction button. So to change it to fraction form, you simply press MAP, which is right below the alpha key, and the first option is fraction, so press Enter, and it's going to take your answer and put it into fractional form, and it gives you 7 3 thirds. So it's 7 pi over 3. Okay? Amazing button, right? Fraction is the math button, and it's the first option. Okay? Yep. That was our 420, and then if we look at our 280, 280 divided by 180 gave us 1.5 repeating. So math, fraction, enter, 14 pi over 9. So again, it's a way to check and verify that you're, cal that you're canceling properly, but don't get reliant on them, okay? Questions on that? All right, so then the next piece of this is to go the opposite way. We're going to convert from radians to degrees. So if something is, nine, or is pi over 9 and we want to convert it to degrees, we take our pi over 9, and we're going to want to cancel the pi. So the equivalent to pi is 180 degrees. So the pi's will cancel. And 18 divided by 9 is 2. So 20 is our answer. Yep. It's OK. So we'll get 20 degrees. Okay, again, we expect you to be able to do these without a calculator. But I did want to show you the fraction button. Do we need to see this one more? 
Yes, okay. 8 pi over 3. 8 pi over 3, we want to remove the pi so that we can be in degrees. So if there's a pi in the numerator, we put the pi in the denominator so they'll cancel. But the equivalent to pi is 180 degrees. Pi radians is 180. So now the pi's cancel. And 180 can be divided by 3 how many times? 60. So 60 times 8 is 480 degrees. Now, here's that single number again. No degree sign, right? So here's a good old three radians. That means they took some number times 3.14159, etc., and got three. So it's going to be a number smaller than one, right? Okay? So we're going to take this and we're going to make it into degrees. So this is three radians. We want to introduce degrees, so we put the 180 on top. We want to make it equivalent on the bottom, so pi on the bottom. So that means that we're going to take 3 times 180, and we're going to divide that by pi. And if you want to get a true degree measure, this is one of those times when we will have to let you use the calculator, okay? Because we just don't have enough time to do these problems with everything else. So now we're going to take our 3 times our 180, and we're going to divide that by pi. So 540 divided by pi, not 548, 540 divided by pi. And use your pi button. It's this, the shift of the caret key, your power button. So it's right above your divide. And you get 171.89 degrees. Which makes sense, right? This was something less than 180 degrees because it was less than th 3 radians, or three, less than pi radians, so 171.89 makes sense. Reasonable. Questions on these? Okay. All right. Next. So arc length, we discussed this a bit yesterday. When we said that we have a circle of radius r with a central angle theta, it intercepts an arc length of s, and we use s equals r times theta, provided that theta is measured in radians. Okay. For any circle r with a central angle, any circle with radius r with a central angle of theta, Okay, if you want to know how long that arc length is, okay, how far does something travel if it travels that path, you're looking at S equals R times theta. Okay, the radius times the radian measure of that angle. And that's the key. It has to be in radians. So you'll have to convert from degrees to radians at times to use this formula. So we have a circle that has a radius of 10 inches. Okay, not quite a ruler, long, right? Circle with a radius of 10. We want to find the length of the arc intercepted by a central angle of 140 degrees. Okay, so if our circle has a radius of 10, and we're to, to find an uh, angle that's intercepted, we have a 140 degree angle, And we want to know how much distance or how what's the length of this. Not a full circumference of our circle. How long is this guy? So what's the first step? Okay. The we're looking for the arc length. We're trying to find S, right? And so we're going to use the formula S equals R times theta, but the key to this is theta has to be in radians. Okay. 
Okay, so R is 10. So convert your degrees to radians. Okay, so to find S, we're going to take this 10 and we're going to have to take it times theta in radians. So 140 degrees times what will get me radians? Yep. So our degrees cancel, our tens cancel. 14 over 18 is going to reduce to 7 over 9. 7 pi over 9. So we're going to take that 10 times the 7 pi over 9, and we'll have our arc length. Okay. So 10 times 7 is 70. 70 divided by 9 times pi, however you want to do it. Let's do, go to two decimal places. Twenty-four point four three. Everybody get that? Okay. So S is twenty-four point four three inches. Okay. So far so good. All right. So that's arc length. That's how much is the outer edge of that particular angle with or that particular radius of, of the circle. Okay, now, angular and linear speeds. Angular speed is something in radians per unit of time. Okay, so think of this guy's measurement as radians per unit of time. Whether it's seconds, feet, or seconds, uh, minutes, hours, whatever. Okay? So far so good? Okay. Now, linear speed is what we're used to. Miles per hour, feet per second, whatever. Right? The stuff that we're currently, we do it all the time with miles per hour in a vehicle. Okay? We work with them all the time. So, in order to find your angular speed, it says that it's equal to theta divided by time. Okay, no big deal. You just figure out what the um, revolution of the radians per time is per unit of time. The linear speed is going to be equal to our arc length divided by time. So what's the arc length equal to? What was S equal to before? The length of the arc, what did we say that was? S was equal to, I'm sorry, in just in the, the formula. S is equal to R times that circle thing, right? The Greek letter theta, okay? So S is R theta. If you want to remember that the velocity then is the radius times the angle in radians divided by time, that might be a better formula for you because then you don't have to think of, of two different formulas and how they work. Okay? And this is always miles per hour, feet per second, whatever. Things that we're used to. Okay? Now, here's an example of angular velocity and linear velocity. When I was in working one, one spring in Bellevue, I was driving to work, and out of the corner of my eye, when I got to a bridge, or uh, to a bridge area where there was a bike path, I saw this circular thing, mo motion going by, but in lights. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool, what's going on? Some, it was a really nice day. It was still dark enough to need the lights, right, in the spring when the sun hasn't started coming up early enough, and I was going to work, and it was still dark, but this guy was riding to work. And he had lights on his bike. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Because so many times when we talk about revolutions per second, like in a saw blade or in a car, right, RPMs, you think of your RPMs in your vehicle, revolutions per minute, they're so fast, you can't possibly see them. But this will allow me to see that light going along this bike path. So I tried to stalk this person, 
put my camera in my car for several days, hoping I'd see this person again and could happen to, you know, serendipity be le there lucky and take a, a, a video of it, and it didn't happen. So I gave up on that. I was worried about having my camera stolen out of my car anyway. So I bought some lights and had my son film this at dusk. Okay, so I filmed him riding. So this is what linear velocity or angular velocity looks like. So it's in our neighborhood on a bike path. And then you put little lights on the tires, see what happens. You can kind of see him galloping along, right? All right, so that's slowed down a quite a bit. He's not going very fast and so on. So we're trying to figure out how fast he's going on this bike. So one thing we need to know is we need to know his tire size, right? But it doesn't matter where that light is, if it's here or it's here, it doesn't really matter, right? You'll have a smaller circle that it makes or a bigger circle that it makes. Does that make sense? Okay. What we're really interested in is not how far that light is away from the spoke of the tire. What we're truly interested in is how far away is the edge of the tire from the spoke of the bike. Make sense? Because we need to know the radius of that wheel so we can know how far it's traveling, right? So we can figure out his speed. So his bike has a 12 and a half inch radius on his tire. Okay, I finally figured out, oh, that's why they call it a 12.5 inch bike. Okay, didn't know that before. So this is a 12.5 inch bike. That's the radius of his tire. And here he is. I told him to speed it up, go a little faster, but don't don't wreck and don't get hurt. And so here he is. Oops, wrong one. Going faster. Okay. And the idea behind it is that we can slow that video down a little bit. Okay too fast for the human eye to see, right? So we can slow it down using a program or a, a video or a video editing program called Camtasia Studio. And I'm just going to show a little five second clip here. So notice his back tire is at the top, right? Top of a ro rotation. And watch what happens as we move it. There's one rotation, two rotations, three rotations, four, five revolutions, six revolutions, finally there's seven revolutions in a 5.01 second clip, okay? So he's going five rotations, per, or seven rotations per five seconds. Make sense so far? Okay, so we've slowed it down enough to where we can actually see what's going on. Okay, so, what do we know? We know he has a bike that has a 12.5 inch radius for its tire. We know that he can travel seven rotations or revolutions per five seconds. So we want to find his angular velocity, okay? And then we want to find his linear velocity, okay? So to find the angular velocity, we need to take this revolutions per second and change it into radians per second, okay? How many radians are there in one revolution? 6.28 or otherwise known as 2 pi, okay? So there's 2 pi radians in a revolution. See how the revolutions are done, right? And so 7 times 2 is 
14. 14 pi over 5 is his angular velocity, radians per second. Make sense so far? So when they're asking for angular velocity, they're asking for radians per second, or radians per minute, or radians per hour, okay? Radians per unit of time. So far so good? All right. Let's find his linear velocity, okay? Linear velocity, I said, is probably easiest just to remember to take your angular velocity times what? Angular velocity times the radius, the radius of a tire, okay? So our angular velocity, we said, was 14 pi over 5. And we're taking that times the radius of the tire, 12.5 inches. So 14 times 12.5 divided by 5. And we're talking about 35 pi, if I did the if I put in right, 35 pi rate, um, inches per second. Now, does that mean anything to you and me? No. That's a weird number, right? So 35 times pi is roughly a 109.96. But still, does that mean anything to us? Can we have a frame of reference for one, 110 inches per second? No. So this would be an acceptable answer. But let's put it into a frame of reference that we're used to. We're used to measuring speed in what? Miles per hour. Okay, we want miles per hour. So we need to convert from seconds to hours. Okay? So we want the seconds to go away. How many seconds are there in a minute? 60. Seconds are gone. Okay? How many minutes are there in an hour? Minutes are gone, and now I have inches per hour. So far, so good? Okay. Now, I don't want to be in inches anymore, though. I want miles. So how many inches are there in a foot? Twelve. So I want the inches to go away. I put it on the bottom. One foot with 12 inches, right? And now I want to go to miles. How many um, feet are there in a mile? 5,280, right? Feet cancel. And now my inches are gone. And now I'll have my answer in miles per hour, right? So if we multiply this guy out, we're going to take it times 60, or times 3,600, and then we're going to divide that by 12, and take that answer divided by 5,280, unless we put them in parentheses. And he was going right at 6.25 miles per hour. Is that a reasonable answer for a bike ride? Absolutely. Any, any of you bike? My brother-in-law does. He bikes a lot. And he was streamlining behind a car in Colorado going downhill on a mountain type thing. And he got to like 23 or 26 miles an hour. So he was really hauling with when he was doing that. But it's really difficult on a bike to get to, I, he might have been going 40-something. 40, 40 I'll have to go back and look at his Facebook post. But it's really hard to get to really high speeds because you're not very aerodynamic on a bike. and you really have to go have a lot of horsepower in your legs <laughs> to make a move. They're not super efficient. Okay. Questions on this one? Okay, next one. So, second hand of a watch is 1.3 centimeters long. And we want to find the linear speed of the tip of the second hand as it passes around the watch face. 
Okay? So to find the linear speed, we have to know the angular velocity and take it times the radius. Okay? Linear velocity equals angular velocity times radius. Okay? So, first of all, we've got to figure out what its angular velocity is. How many radians per second or per minute or per hour? Radians per unit of time. So let's think about a revolution. How often does the second hand make it around the clock? The, the second, second hand, sorry. The second hand, so we have an hour hand, right? We have a minute hand, and we're talking about this little dude right here. Okay? In 60 seconds, it makes one full revolution, right? Okay? So to find the angular velocity, we have one revolution every 60 seconds, right? We have to change that RP something to radians per something, okay? How many radians are there in one revolution? 2 pi. So if we take this times 2 pi, we have 2 pi over 60, right? Which is the same as pi over 30 radians per second. I don't want to put my C in there for some reason. Okay? So let's take pi and divide it by 30. Point one zero or point one zero four seven. Okay? Radians per second. Okay? Keep that in your calculator. Don't delete it. Don't remove it. Don't clear it. That's our angular velocity. That's our omega. That's our w. How do we get our linear velocity? Take it times the radius. So 0 0.1047, whatever's in your calculator, times 1.3 centimeters. Okay? So we take that times 1.3, um, we get 0.136 something. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? And then we could also convert that to a minute and so forth, but that's what we're, that's what we're doing. Okay, so far so good? Now, someone else may have said, hey, I do one revolution every minute, right? Okay, and then that would be in whatever it was without the divided by 60 would be your centimeters per minute, okay, which would be more. So let's take this times 60 um, minutes, or 60 seconds in one minute to see how far it actually goes throughout the course of a minute. And we get 8.168 centimeters in one minute. Make sense? Did I lose anybody? Okay. All right. So your assignment today, add it to yesterday's. Save paper. Oh, I have one more thing. I forgot about this guy. I'm sorry. Area of a sector of a circle. Okay. Another formula that they have listed for you, but I don't know that we actually absolutely need it. Okay. Think about what's happening here. Okay. We have a sprinkler on a golf course. Okay, and that sprinkler is spraying water over a distance of 75 feet and rotates through an angle of 135 degrees. Okay, pretty powerful sprinkler. It's sending it a long way. Okay, so when you think about it in your uh, own home or whatever, in your, in your yard, we don't have usually sprinklers that go a whole 360 degrees, do we? They usually have a zone that they, they will spray in. Okay. So this sprinkler might hit this space, and then we may have another sprinkler that helps cover another portion of the lawn, right? Something that goes like this. And hopefully you have some kind of overlap, right? 
so that you don't get brown spots on your yard. Okay. So here's our sprinkler, and we have a 135 degree arc that this sprinkler is making, central angle. Okay. It has a 75 foot radius. And our goal is to figure out what's the area that it covers. So they give us a formula, 1 half r squared theta with theta being in radians. So what's the area of a circle? Pi r squared. And do we have a full circle here? What fractional part of our circle do we have? Let's be very, very precise about it. 135 out of 360. So we have 135 out of 360 of a whole circle, right? So what's our radius? So we're going to take that times 75 squared. So 135 out of 360 and that ended up being 3 eighths of our circle, right? So 3 eighths times 75 squared is going to be 2,109 point three seven five square feet. Make sense? Okay. So why does this old style way work? Well, we're just taking the fractional part of three sixty times our whole circle, right? Area of a whole circle. So let's see how these two relate. This one half times R squared, I see the seventy five squared still, right? And then theta, okay, theta has to be in radians. So if I take 135 and I take that times, what, to get radians? Pi over 180, don't I get 135 over 360 times pi times r squared? So they're the same thing, just different, different appearances. So if you want to avoid memorizing another formula, just remember I can use pi r squared, but I don't have a whole circle. I have this much of a circle, however many degrees out of 360. Make sense? Okay. All right. So keep your paper used handy. We're going to do today's assignment on yesterday's, and then we'll turn it all in tomorrow.